All right, I am going to go ahead and get us kicked off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our FAMS Comprehensive Background Check or CBC process for child care providers. This is our first technical assistance session today. We are so excited to have you. And today we're going to talk about requesting a waiver. Uh, before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. This is going to answer some questions that I already see in the Q&A box. First and foremost, we do have a large audience today, so lines are muted just so this allows for greater quiet on our training. However, there is a Q&A box and we do encourage all of you to ask questions. Pop those into the Q&A box and we'll be answering them throughout today's session. If you cannot locate the Q&A box, if it's not showing up, you're going to go to WebEx. You'll go to the bottom right hand corner and you should see a little question mark. Click on that and that'll open it. Uh, if you do not see the question mark, there'll be little dots. It's called an ellipse. Click that and that'll open that. That'll give you the option for the Q&A box. Last, this presentation is being recorded. It will not be emailed to all of you, but it will be posted to the um, training and resource site uh, to uh, for uh, uh, the comprehensive background check process. And just a quick note that at this point in time, the OCFS website, the whole thing is down, unfortunately. However, OCFS is working hard to get that back up um, and this uh, training will be posted there by the end of the week. Uh, I'm going to go to our agenda, but before I talk about what's to come, I want to just pass it over. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have Patty Burns from OCFS on the line. I just wanted to see uh, if she had anything she'd like to share with this group. Good afternoon. I almost said morning because I've been in back to back meetings and I didn't realize it was noon already. <laughs> Um, but good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Um, we are excited that this new process has rolled out and that people are in there and using it and they are giving us feedback, which is fantastic, and using the the FAM CBC help box when needed. So we're trying to get to everybody's answers or questions as quickly as possible. But we really want to welcome you, and I think that coming to these um, technical assistance trainings will really benefit everybody. So it's good to see so many people here. And again, if you need anything, we're here. Reach out to the box and we will get um, answer you as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patty. I see some questions coming in. We have three of these uh, technical assistance sessions scheduled. Uh, we will most likely be scheduling more and you'll receive an email and we'll also post that on the OCFS website as well. All right, so what are we going to cover in our time together today? First, we're going to start out with a review of the comprehensive background check waiver process. I'm then going to do a demonstration, so I'll be going into a UAT or a testing environment, which mirrors the live environment, and we'll do this in real time. I'm then going to answer some waiver process FAQs, and lastly, I will show you the support and training center. I have a slide to show you this. Like I said, the website is down, crossing our fingers that it will be up soon, uh, but when it's back up, I'll show you where to find some great resources for all of you. All right, so we're going to begin today's session with an overview of the waiver request process. When child care providers such as you have a new staff member apply to a position with the program, or you have a new household member or volunteer that needs to be added to your staff list, the first item is to check if this person has fingerprints on file with the Office of Children and Family Services. Now, keep in mind, if the person has never worked in child care, then they will need to have their go. They will need to have their fingerprints taken. Same process as it's always been or has been for a while, I should say. Now, if the applicant was previously approved for child uh, daycare and has not had a break in service of more than 180 days, your regulator may associate their fingerprints to your program. So how would you know this? Well, probably pretty safe to bet that if somebody is coming from another program um, that they have been fingerprinted in the last five years and most likely it's still valid. So what happens? Once an individual successfully completes the comprehensive background clearance or CBC requirements, their fingerprints can be associated or waived to another child care program within New York State. 
the approval is valid for up to five years unless there is a break in service from working in any program for more than 180 days. And why is this important? Why are we taking time today out of your busy schedules to go through this process? What it does is it eliminates the need to submit new fingerprints to the New York State Office of Children and Family Service for the purpose of obtaining a criminal history background check for applicants. So when they've already been fingerprinted and they can be waived into your program, a lot of that information is carried over and you don't have to fill out as many forms as you would if they were a brand new employee. Now, as a reminder, I know I'm honing in on this, but it's really important to remember that this is only going to be viable um, if that person, so that new staff, household member, or volunteer um, has had a CBC, so a comprehensive background check approved in the prior five years, and they have not had a break of service in more than 180 days since they were originally CBC approved. So say they were approved um, four years ago, but for whatever reason they took off 184 days, well, then their fingerprints won't be able to be associated with your program, and you'll have to enter them as though they are brand new, and they'll have to go through uh, that whole process again. All right, so what does this process look like? We're going to take a little look at the waiver process, and I'm also going to show you how to find a facility ID. All right, so your first step is to log into FAMS. I do see uh, that some of you are having problems with that, so Patty will address those questions. Um, and if you do have issues logging into FAMS, you can reach out to that help box and or your regulator. So after logging into FAMS, and you should have all received an invitation, uh, this new process went live just about 10 or so days ago. It went live on the 15th. So after logging into FAMS, on your facility FAMS dashboard, you'll see options for child care slot management or any other features you have access to, including background checks. What you'll do is you'll click on the background checks drop down menu where you can choose to view the staff list. We're going to cover that in another technical assistance session, or you can request a waiver. So to request a waiver, you'll simply select the request a waiver option. This will bring you to the request a waiver page. And the first question says, has this person been fingerprinted at another program or are they currently CBC approved? After you select yes to this question, a series of fields will appear. Now on here, everything with a star or asterisk is required. So you'll need uh, their first name, last name, date of birth, their previous facility name, so where were they working previously, their requested role. You'll also see the facility ID you want to wave them into and the name of that program, and you'll click the Add Facility button. And you can request to wave them into multiple facilities. So maybe you run a program that has multiple facilities and you want to wave them into those. You'll just enter as many as you need to following those last two steps by entering that facility ID and the facility name and click add. When you're all ready, you'll click the submit button. And what happens is you'll see this box pop up that says a waiver request has been sent to your regulator. Once the fingerprints have been matched, you will see this staff member on your staff list and you will be able to enter their 6,000 packet. So if the request is approved, meaning your regulator can match up those fingerprints, the regulator will wave the person into your facility and they will appear on your staff list. It is important to note I'm going to repeat this. It is important to note that you as the provider will not receive an email that the waiver request has been approved. So what we do is we recommend that you continue to check the staff list or you could always follow up with your regulator with any questions. If the person does not have prints on file with OCFS, send them to get their prints taken.
and then they'll appear on your CBC active list within a few days from that time. And I wanted to show you what the email looks like that your regulator receives. Remember, you are not going to receive an email. We have we recommend that you come in here and keep checking um, to see if that person has been added to your your list. So here's the email that the regulator receives. Uh, it has the subject of waiver request. It'll say, dear regulator name. A waiver request has been submitted by you, in this instance, by me, uh, for the following person. It'll have their first name, their last name, their date of birth, their previous facility ID number, if you have entered this in. Now, this is really helpful information. And Anne-Marie, I see your question. Uh, we're going to go over how to look up a facility ID next. Um, they'll also ask for the um, uh, previous facility name, the role that you have requested them to be waived into, and the facility ID or IDs you want to waive them into. So if you've entered multiple facility IDs, those will appear here. In this example, I just have one daycare and I just want them to be waived into my Lily Perkins child care. All right, so that facility ID for that previous facility, it's not expected that you will know that. And while this is not required information, it can be helpful to the regulator. So now I wanted to go over how you can find a facility ID. There are two ways. So the first way is you can pick up the phone email or contact that program in question to get the facility ID. Just give them a call and they should be able to find their facility ID on their program's license or registration. So that's the number one way. Another way is you can use the handy search for regulated child care section on the OCFS website to search by that, whoops, excuse me, Sorry about that, uh, to search by name and or location. So the first one's pretty self-explanatory, right? You'll pick up the phone, send an email, contact the other facility ID, but this might not, the second one, searching for regulated care on the OCFS website, might not be something that you are familiar with. So I wanted to go over this process, and this might come in handy for you for other instances as well. So, as I mentioned, unfortunately, the OCFS website is down at the moment. They're working hard. They're working hard to restore that, but in the meantime, we'll have to go with these as screenshots. So, you'll go to the OCFS main page here, and you'll click on the Child Care tab on the top left side of the page, as you see here highlighted in red. In the center column, You'll click on find child care. It's a little hard to see, but it's the first option here. After that, you'll see this contents at the top, but where you want to look is towards the center of the page. You'll see search for regulated child care. And what you'll do is you'll click on New York State Child Care. This will bring up the search for child care page. So what is nice about this is that you can go directly to this page right here by going to this URL, but I did want to show you that other way just so you're familiar with it. And once you get to this page, you can search on a map, which is really great. So maybe you don't know the exact name of the daycare, but you know it was in the Albany area or Schoharie area or Clifton Park or something like that. You can hone in on a specific area and look it up that way. Or you can look it up using many or single filters here. So you could search by program type and count your borough. You could search by school district zip code, name, and if you happen to know the program ID, you wouldn't be on this page, right? Um, now, when it comes to name, I want you to know that you do need to enter in the name exactly as it appears um, on that child care license or um, uh, on their license. So do, do if it doesn't come up right away, um, do use other search techniques. So hope you found that helpful. I think this is a really nice tool. Again, you can get there from the main page or you can just go right uh, to this URL here. All right, Patty uh, and Melissa, thank you so much for answering questions. Before we jump to the waiver process demonstration, are there any questions you want to bring up? And this will give me a minute to switch my screens. Uh, 
I have been trying to answer questions. Um, so I know some of the questions that are coming in are um, about the waiver process and how um, how long it takes that I can't answer for you because it does depend on um, certainly the regulator and also the um, person's history. So uh, that is not something we could give you a time frame on. And um, <clears throat> the break in service, I think, was covered. So we, when somebody has been CBC approved, they receive a letter. So if they're going to a new program, and they're bringing that letter with them to show you that they've been CBC approved. That's how you know they have um, fingerprints and they've been CBC approved if they've only been fingerprinted and they may not have completed the clearance, but it hasn't been 180 days, they could be waived and then complete the process. You would be able to tell that once they show up on your active list, if you look at view outstanding items, it'll tell you what clearances are still needed for that person. Um, other than that, there's just kind of some intricate little or one-off kind of questions that um, I think Melissa and I are trying to dig into. But um, certainly, if you have any questions, reach out to the PAM CBC help box and we'll be more than happy to help you. I will actually put that email right up in here so that um, if you don't see, if you don't, didn't, don't grab it on the last screen, because I'm probably pretty sure if I put it there, um, then you can grab it here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Patty. Um, and just so folks know, this is our first technical assistance session. We are adding more uh, next week. We're going to go over the staff list and we'll have a, another topic for the following week. And then if these prove to be um, exciting for all of you, we will continue to host them. All right. I am now going to stop sharing so that I can share uh, my next screen here. All right. So as promised, we are going to look at this in real time uh, in a test environment. So just so you know, today we are we're not using any live information. I have created a test account so that we can all walk through uh, this process together. So here I am, I have logged into FAMS. I'm on my facility dashboard. This will show you everything that you have access to. Now, let's say that I have a new staff member that's come to me and they have brought their CBC approval letter, right? And I've looked at the date, they were CBC approved say a three years ago and they have not had a break in service of more than 180 days. They've been working at the same childcare facility for the past uh, three, three years. And I want to wave them into my facility instead of starting a brand new CBC. There are two ways to do this, the easiest way is to go to background checks right here and select request a waiver. And this brings us to our first page. So notice how in the screenshot I showed you earlier, there were all those questions down here. Well, why aren't they appearing? In order for those questions to appear, you first have to select yes to the question here. It says, has this person been fingerprinted at another program or are they currently CBC approved? If you select no to this question, it will say to add people who have not been fingerprinted yet, go back to background checks, click on staff list, and then click on add new staff. Well, in this instance, I know that this person, they physically handed me their CBC letter. They showed it to me. Everything checks out. So I'm going to click the yes button here, the yes radio button, because I want to wave them into my program. And now I'm simply going to go through here and fill out all of the required information. So we're going to say their first name is Marie, Maria. Uh, that is required. Middle name, middle initial is not, but I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. Her middle initial is E. Uh, her last name we'll say is Hunter. We'll enter her date of birth. And what's nice about this is a little calendar pops up and you can choose different months and different years. Uh, so maybe she was born in the year we'll go with 2020 and we'll go with uh, yesterday's date. Previous facility ID. 
again, while not required, it is helpful information. So you can use those two processes I showed you earlier in our presentation today to find that facility ID. You can contact that facility and have them look it up for you, or you can look it up yourself on the OCFS website. There's that search option, which allows you to look on a map or filter using criteria to find that previous facility ID. So for the purposes of today's training, let's pretend that I have looked up that information. So I'll enter that in here and then I'll enter it in. She worked at Little Scholars. Next is the requested role. Is she going to be an employee, director, on-site provider, or volunteer? And the requested role options that you see here will be dependent on your modality. Uh, I believe this one is either a DCC or a SAC. And so these are uh, options that are relevant uh, that pertain to them. She's going to be an employee. And this is another piece of required information. And requested by this will be pre populated with the individual who is logged into FAMS. Next, you'll enter the facility ID you want to wave into. So this will be, if you've got one facility, this will be your facility ID, right? So we'll enter a random facility ID here. And then the name. So we are Lily, oops, let me spell that right. Lily Perkins Childcare. And we'll click Add Facility. Now, what if I uh, have multiple centers or I run an after school program? Here's where you could, you can wave into multiple facilities. So we'll enter another facility ID and we'll say, you know, Lily Perkins, maybe I've got an east and a west location. So I also want this employee to be able to work at my west location as well. So I've simply entered in this information again, click add. Um, now, if you've made a mistake, so I've entered in this, we'll enter in some numbers. We'll do Lily Perkins East. I can also cancel this out. I'm just going to delete it for today. All right. I now have the two facilities that I would like to have her waved into. If I see a mistake here, oh, I, I input this name incorrectly. I can click the edit button and I forgot to add child care. So we'll add up oh, and I forgot this one is actually Lily Perkins East. And click add facility and see how it updated there. And if you need to delete a facility, maybe this individual would just like to work at Lily Perkins Childcare East with the delete button. You can delete uh, a facility. When you're ready to send that waiver request over to your regulator, and have them receive that email that I showed you, you'll click the save button. Here's that green uh, message that I showed you earlier. It says a waiver request has been sent to your regulator. Once the fingerprints have been matched, you will see the staff member on your staff list and you will be able to enter their 6,000 packet. Now, if this is all you need to do for today, you can close out your browser or log out. If you would like to return to your staff list, you'll click background checks and staff list. You can also request a waiver again. So this time we're going to go to background checks and staff list. And once this individual has been cleared, they will appear on your uh, staff list here. Your regulator will get that email. They'll see if they can match up those fingerprints and then they'll be here. And then you can go into that individual and enter the required CBC information that you need to. Now, as I mentioned, there are two ways that you can initiate this waiver request. The first way we went over was going to that background checks drop down menu and clicking waiver request. Well, what if you find yourself on this page and you say, oh, you know, I really would like to do a waiver request. I just got this new, I just had this person come. They'd like to be an employee at my daycare, a staff member, and I need to request, uh, and they, it looks like they are CBC approved. So I want them to be waived into my program. Another way to initiate that waiver request is by coming to this page right here, the staff list page, and clicking the add new staff button. And the very first question you're asked, which is required, is has this 
person being fingerprinted at another program or are they currently CBC approved? If you select no to this question, you'll be prompted to go through and enter in information about this individual. If you select yes, though, look what happens. You get that same page you got before where you can enter in all those information, all that information and request that the individual be waived into your program. So that's how to request a waiver. Pretty simple process. The one thing to remember here uh, is that everything with a star or asterisk is required um, and that you can waive people into multiple facilities. I did see that come up quite a bunch. Before we jump back into our PowerPoint, Patty and Melissa, was there anything else that folks wanted to see in this test environment before I hop out? Excuse me. Go ahead. The one I feel like people have asked about is even like they get to their first dashboard where they just see their their page and they don't know to click on their facility ID to get them to this view that you're showing right now. I'm not sure if you can go back to that to show them that. Sure. Uh, let's see, Melissa. Um, facility. I'm logged in in the back way. If you go and click on your green um, home button let's, there. Let's see if this works. Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. Um, I think just to make sure from that page that they know that's where they'd want to go to their background check. So oh, from that absolutely. top. Yep. So. So once you get into your facility dashboard, as Melissa indicated, uh, the background checks option, which was just added last week. So if you did have access to FAMS prior to the 22nd, uh, you wouldn't have seen this, but when this was launched on the 22nd, this background checks is new. And you go from your facility dashboard, you'll go to background checks, and then that staff list is that page I showed you with the table with all of your active staff, and then the request a waiver is the option where you can go right to requesting that waiver where your uh, regulator will get emailed. Uh, there, there are quick reference guides for all of this where we have a reference guide that walks you through each of these different steps, including requesting a waiver. So when the OCFS website is back up again, uh, you'll be able to see those. Anything else we want to explore here today? No? Okay. So let us jump out of here. And I will jump back in to our PowerPoint for a couple of minutes here. All right, so that was uh, requesting a waiver. Next, we wanted to go over some frequently asked questions. And after this, we'll open it up. Uh, Patty and Melissa, I'm giving you a heads up. Uh, if there are any questions you want to address, we will have plenty of time to do so. Uh, so we can either just run down the questions or if there's specific questions you'd like to cover, let us know. All right, some frequently asked questions. So one question we get all the time is, can an employee be waived into multiple facilities? Yes, absolutely. As I showed you, you would just go through that process of adding the facility ID and the name of the facility that you would like them to be waived into. You'll add those facilities, and then when you're all set, you'll click the submit button, and they certainly can be waived into more than one facility. Talking about their clearance. So if someone was cleared four years ago, can they be waived into my facility? They can. However, their approval is valid for up to five years unless there is a break in service from working in any program for more than 180 days. I did see the 180 days uh, come up here, and that is calendar days, correct, Melissa and Patty versus business days? That is correct, calendar date. So yes, so we're looking at 180 calendar days. So yep, if they were cleared four years ago, they should be good, again, unless they uh, had a break in service from working in any program for more than 180 days. 
And last, so how do I know when a staff member needs to be fingerprinted again? So this is one of the really great things about this new CBC process and this staff list, which we're going to explore in detail next week. So when you come to the staff list, you'll see a bunch of different columns. And this day's remaining column on your facility dashboard and FAMS shows you how many days are left until each staff member needs to be fingerprinted again and needs to go through that CBC process. So what's really nice about this is that you can sort this in ascending or descending order. So you can see those that have only a few days potentially remaining or those that were uh, just just fingerprinted uh, recently and have that full five years to go. So again, facility dashboards, you'll go to uh, that background checks menu, click that staff list. And once you get to this staff list here, uh, you'll be able to see those days remaining. Uh, another couple of things to mention about this. I see some questions coming in uh, questions about the CBC letters. When somebody does go through that CBC process, they will receive a letter and so will you. Um, you'll be able to see that letter in FAMS and staff members too can log into FAMS just to view that letter. And our last item here is our training and resources and information. So there is a new section that was added to the background checks uh, website on the OCFS website called training resources and information. Here we have what we call quick reference guides. There are 12 or 13 of these in total, and they walk through all the steps of the CBC process from start to finish. So everything from logging into FAMS to uh, creating a my.ny.gov ID, they'll go through the waiver request and go through each of the tabs that you will see as you complete that CBC process. We also are going to be posting some videos, including a recording of today's session. There have been some website updates and we're also working on a frequently asked questions document. I think all of you asked some great questions today. We may be adding to that document based on um, feedback we got during our session this afternoon. Now, this uh, brings me to our help and support as well. There is a mailbox available. Patty mentioned this earlier. OCFS.SM.SM. FAMS CDC help at ocfs.ny.gov. You are welcome to email this inbox and this is for questions and support. And then beneath is the OCFS uh, um, uh, CBC background uh, website as well. All right, and this does bring us to the end of our official presentation. So now I'm going to pass it over to Patty and Melissa to see if there were any questions they wanted to address. Um, <clears throat> Kate Novitsky, I did see your email and that is actually a training question, not a waiver question. So I will respond to you and it's not a, a CBC question. So I will respond to you outside of this, but um, there was that. Um, when requesting a waiver for there's I mean the waiver you can request the waiver if you believe the person has been CBC approved or they believe they've been CBC approved you can request the waiver if you are not sure you can request the waiver the regulator will search if they don't come up with the person they'll tell you they need to go get fingerprinted if Identico says they have fingerprints on file that are active you need to work with your regulator to um, find out where those fingerprints are or how to access those fingerprints. Um, but other than that, the I can't think of anything else, Melissa. The only thing that the, several people asked about, and Piper, maybe you can speak to this, wanting to also have a demo and information on how to enter the 6,000 packet. And I believe you have another training lined up for that. Absolutely. We're, we are looking to add more trainings to the calendar. Uh, like I said, next week, I think we're going to go over the staff list, but we might, based on today's training, uh, switch that to just a general CBC information session. So maybe we'll do that instead next week and we'll go over 
entering the CBC packet, the 6,000 packet from start to finish. So we are looking to add more trainings uh, for all of you. So we really appreciate your feedback today to help guide us in what's going to be most useful for all of you. And then Piper, the other thing that a lot of people have asked about, and I know unfortunately the with the website down now, it's hard for you to be able to speak, but could you give them a little bit of direction about where on the website they would find it when it is up and available? Yes, absolutely. So let me go back to this screen right here. Uh, so you're gonna look on your left-hand side of the navigation bar. Um, and you'll see uh, information, child care grant program, training, and then there's a whole section actually devoted to it says CCDBG background checks. And there are a couple of sub menus here. So you'll see general information about background checks, what is required, where it goes over what's required and the forms required. And then the training resources and information center is the third option here. And we are adding to this. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff to add this week. We'll have a walkthrough. So if any of you attended our information sessions last month, we're going to have a version of that in English and Spanish. And then we have all of our instructional user guides here uh, are all in English and Spanish. We're also putting together a comprehensive guide. So for those of you that would like to know about everything from start to finish, we're going to have a 50 plus page guide in English and Spanish that will walk you through the entire process. And you can also get there by just going to this website right here uh, and that will lead you right to that main page and then you'll see that navigation on the left. And I'm going to pop this. Somebody asked for this website. So uh, I'm going to pop this into. There we go into uh, the chat. Yes, I believe somebody asked about opening up space in the next week's uh, train in the next week's webinar. I think we can based on um, how many people we had registered and how many people we had attended. So we will take that back and if we can open up more space, we certainly will. As I mentioned, these are all being recorded. So if you're not able to attend the live session, uh, there will be a recorded one posted to the website. Um, and somebody did say they had issues with the uh, mailbox for questions. So I'll leave this up here. I wonder if you just had a period in the wrong place or didn't type it in correctly. So ocfs.sm.fams, CBC help at ocfs.ny.gov. And with that, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and end today's session unless anyone has anything they'd like to add. No, not hearing anything. So I'd like to thank you all for your time today. As I mentioned, we will be adding more of these sessions uh, to the calendar. We'll post the registration link on the website and we'll probably email it out to you as well. Uh, so do be sure to um, to register for those. If you have any ideas for future sessions, you are welcome to uh, email the inbox as well. But thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy days to learn more about the waiver request. I hope you have a great rest rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, everyone.